Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls. I need to put this on. I had to walk to the store this morning, so I forgot to put my bracelet back on. I don't wear it with my coat because it tends to, because of the magnetic clasp, it comes off and then in my coat sleeve and then I lose it. But also, I laughed at poor, poor Dr. Snurf here because he was inside of his cage just digging away inside of a corner and he was down at the bottom of the cage so he had all this bedding up on top of him and he was just digging and and looking for stuff and i came up and i started digging at the top of where he was and he just didn't panic but he did the typical i'm gonna flop over onto my back and and kick out my hind legs and he was just a very silly little boy so he wants to go back I'm going to put, a, put him back in his cage because he is a sweetie and I, I want all my hamsters to know that if they let me know that they want the situation to change, like they want to go down, they just have to let me know and I'll let them down. So he's still new and he's still learning that, but he's going to learn it and he's going to, he's going to do good. And it's definitely a, a, a thumbs up. I have to rotate my mic a little bit more away from me. I had to change my mic placement yesterday and now it's different. It's at the wrong height and I can't figure out where it's supposed to be anymore. So it's it's fun. The, the wire comes out the bottom right where my keyboard is. So I got to try and place the wire that comes down out of the bottom of the microphone in such a way that it doesn't press on the keys and it's a hassle. If I hadn't changed it, it would be okay but then I wouldn't have been able to make yesterday's picture. So thumbs up for that. You cannot change the past, accept what has happened and move on. Now what I mean by that, and what I mean by that, after I got sober in the year 2000, I have had to accept the fact that because of the damage I did to my body, there is a huge possibility. And I'm, the fact that I've managed to live this long is awesome. But within the first couple of years of my going sober, it was like, I don't even know if I'm going to live past five years because I have done so much damage to my body. And especially when my first couple of years of getting sober, there was, I should have died in the first place. So the fact that I was still alive, I was unsure if I was going to continue to be alive. So the five year mark was kind of a, a milestone but now I've got stuff going on that I don't know I mean I've mentioned the fact that I've got pain in my upper right quadrant of my abdomen my wife thought it was a pulled muscle pinched nerve and it's become chronic pain it's just gotten worse though so I don't know if it was like cancer or something you'd think it would have killed me already because it's hurt for 10 years or more. And cancer is generally not something that like last 10 years, you know, goes growing for 10 years and then gets bad. Cancer is generally, it grows a bit and then it's a struggle to get rid of it once it's big enough to detect. Because once it's big enough to detect, it's also big enough that it's spreading. So, yay on that. So, I don't know what it is. I have no idea what's causing the pain. It could even be related to my sleep mask. Because thinking back, I think the pain in my abdomen started approximately about the same time that I started using my sleep mask. Thinking back on it last night. When I wear my sleep mask, my sleep apnea machine, it forces air down my throat and it's a mask that goes over my mouth and my nose. When I am trying to fall asleep, I'm constantly, until I do fall asleep, burping out air because as my throat in here relaxes, it opens up the pathway not only to your lungs, but my epiglottis relaxes and air goes down into my stomach. And so I'm constantly burping up air as I'm trying to fall asleep. Now, when I wake up the next day, there are times I can barely stand up straight because of the air passing through my upper intestine. Your upper intestinal tract is about 70 feet long. 
and we have no real good way of checking what's in there except if you swallow a pill that's a camera and then they take a look as it goes through your body. Past that, there's no real good way to check in that part of your body, so hopefully there's nothing wrong there. But, trying to continue on with that one. I can't even remember what I was saying on that. Oh yes, the sleep mask. So there are times that I cannot even stand up straight because it feels like I have got butcher knives in my upper abdomen just because of the air traveling through my intestinal tract. Is this related to maybe a diverticulitis in your intestinal tract is like an aneurysm. It is a spot on your intestine that has bubbled out and has become an extra pocket. And food can get trapped in there and then it goes bad, but it's just an extra pocket where stuff gets caught. And because it's caught, food doesn't, especially in a 100 degree body, it goes bad. So you can have stuff rotting in what's known as a diverticulitis, just an extra pocket that puffs out of one of your intestinal tract. If I have that, and I'm getting air caught in it, then yeah, that would hurt. So I need to ask about that. See if there's a, a way to check on that. I mean, if it's just that, and it's just air getting trapped in my intestinal tract, then that's fine. I can live with pain. If it's not gonna kill me, no big deal. I just wanna know what it is and make sure I'm not gonna die. I've got, on average, about 14 years left and I would like to have those 14 years. I do have to accept the things that may have happened. If this is something horrible that is related to my alcoholism and it is gonna kill me, then I still can't complain. I made it past five years. Anything past five years has been gravy. Making it past those five years sober was the, the meat of the product. So that's a good thing. I mean, it's, it's good in that you have to accept. I mean, I can't freak out about it. I can't go, oh my God, it's terrible. It's like, no, I did horrible things to my body with my alcoholism. So if I'm going to die because of my alcoholism, all you can do is accept it. Go forward just going, well, it happened. Freaking out about it isn't going to change it. It happened. Go forward as happy and friendly and as best you can from that point forward. Because you've all got that period in your life too. Metaphorically, of course. I mean, not actually, not you two weren't the same type of alcoholic. What I mean is there have been points and times in your life where things have happened where now you're still reaping the effects of what happened back then. And you just, all you can do is accept it and go on. So I gotta accept it and go on. I'm gonna do my best to make sure I live at least the next 14 years. I am not just going to give up and, and die. I'm gonna fight for all of my life. I am a sewer rat and I'm hard to kill. The fact that I'm alive now is proof that because I, I haven't even talked about the other day I mentioned a whole bunch of my near-death experience stuff. That's just a small amount. I mean, just my housemates here actually saved my life. We were out at her aunt's place once, and she lives right on the edge of a river. To get down to the river, you have to go through some land that is being eroded away. The shoreline is slowly going away. To get onto the path to get there is a very dangerous path. And in fact, it's at the end of this one path that does a hairpin turn. It goes downward with no, no, nothing to grab, downward at a dirt slope, and then two feet past the needle turn, the hairpin turn is a 30 foot drop off to rocks and stumps and broken trees, and you're gonna die. I was coming down as carefully as I could and I was just standing there and all of a sudden I was moving because the rocks under my feet were acting like little wheels. And I was all of a sudden going whoosh, sliding right toward that end. And one of my housemates got down in front of me, planted her feet, put a hand up there and thump right into my chest. 
So, like, two years ago, I almost went flying off a cliff. I don't go there. Uh, I don't want to die. So that was nice and terrifying. Yay. And then, of course, there's just been... I, I even recorded this one. I was crossing the street in town here like a month or two back. And even though I was crossing at a legal crosswalk and a car was across the street and looking at me as I crossed, they came out and turned into my lane as I was crossing and I had to jig and jump to get out of the way or they would have smacked me. So, thumbs up. Still, it's okay. Life is life. I don't have a whole lot that's happened. I did a lot of falling asleep yesterday and I did not go walkies last night. I ended up hitting the hay, well, not a little early. In fact, it was, well, compared to how I do lately, I need to get back to going to bed around 10 o'clock or so. Except if I go to bed around 10, I'm gonna be awake around four. So it's gotta be around 11, so I will wake up around five. So, ugh. I'm getting, I can't even say I'm getting better. Because it's, I don't sleep well. <laughs> I hurt. And I don't have enough pain control medication. and So it's fun. But I didn't go much yesterday. I mean, yesterday morning I went walkies. And then I used my little exercise pedal thing that was given to me by a very, very kind contributor. Subscriber. Well, contributor that contributed the exercise thing. So that was awesome. And this morning I've already gone walkies down to the store and back because I needed to buy some sodas. I need caffeine. I'm an addict. I'm addicted to caffeine. It's good for you. Moderately. I mean, there's negatives and there's positives, but on the whole, being addicted to caffeine is a plus as long as you keep getting your fix. Thumbs up for that. Oh, yes. You should read the book The Forever War by Joe Haldeman. Joe Haldeman is I don't even know if he's still alive now, but he was a science fiction writer who was also a Vietnam veteran, and he wrote a book called The Forever War. It takes, it, he wrote it back when he had just gotten out of the Vietnam War, so the times are weird. I mean, we already had space travel and not FTL. You could get travel at near light speeds, but that was a big part of the book, but not hit light speeds, but there were collapse our jump points that could Boink, boink, instantaneous transportation across huge distances of time. But in 1996, in that book, we had come across an alien race and started a war. The main character of the book was one of the first people that was involved in the war. He got sucked up through being drafted. But because when you move at relativistic speeds, it slows, your, it slows you down to, in relative to the rest of the universe, about a thousand 1500 years had passed by the time that the book was done and he was like 28 and a thousand some odd years had passed and in that time humanity and the human race had changed so much that by the time all the soldiers came back well while they were gone there was to control the population enforced homosexuality where heterosexuality was seen as deviance and at some point would get you taken away and no one would ever see you again but it kept the population of the world stable. But when he finally came back and discovered that the war with the aliens was just a mistake, by that time, humanity had figured out that the best thing to do was, it was all one clone of one person. And they had just a group mind. And that's what humanity was when all the soldiers came back. There was just a clone of one person and Everybody was that one person with that one mind. And that was humanity now. But humanity was also saying, because they, they changed the name, we are man. That is our name. We are man now. But they had also said, you know, we're smart enough to understand. Maybe we don't understand cloning all that well. Maybe we don't understand things all that well. So, everybody that's coming back as a soldier, we are reversing your homosexuality. You are going to be heterosexual. Yes, we understand that feels weird, but don't worry, you'll get used to it. Please, go out, go forth, multiply. If we make a mistake, if we have made an error, we need extra genetic material. But no one was forced to join, and they were encouraged to go out and just breed and expand. So. 
mankind had become the one clone that was taken over. Uh, not taken over because it was guided evolution to win the war. But at one point it was the forever war because humanity, the earth, was on a war economy. And if you got rid of the war, the planet would collapse. So you had to have the war. A very, very good book. Oh my gosh, 15 minutes. If you could check out my various links down below, I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, Google+. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron, that would be very cool, especially this month. It's going to be bad. I don't want to be homeless. If you could help me in any way, that would be awesome, please. But if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I do take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. And if you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get for my existence. Definitely a good thing. Oof. If you could subscribe to the channel, that would be very cool. Greatly appreciated. I would understand if you don't want to. But if you are down with it, I will do my very best to keep you entertained from now to, literal, to the literal end of time. I'm getting all my stuff. I don't know why I'm doing this part first now. Especially since when I do it first instead of after thanking people, I forget to say thank you to each one of my Patreon.com patrons. You are beautiful and awesome people. And if you could become one of these beautiful and awesome people, well then you too could be beautiful and awesome. Thank you very much. Now I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people. It is a range because even though I count an American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand, I have fibromyalgia, depression, widower brain, post-acute withdrawal syndrome, and worse. So I'm getting a lot better. But for right now, I forget so much. And if I mispronounce a username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker. We're not good at pronouncing names. I'm better than most, but... And I'm not, not, half a nerve, not reading the comments right now. I'm going to read them afterward, but for right now, I'm just thanking you for having left a comment. Good comment, bad comment, indifferent comment. You left a comment. Thank you very much. Calling up my crew, we have Prek. Heck of a name. Thank you very, very much. And Honor, greatly appreciated. Lobin Thomas Borks. Heck of a name. Louis or Louis or Lois. Tregit. I am so sorry. I've never understood how to pronounce that particular spelling. Kathy Kitzkat, greatly appreciated. K. Dizzle, greatly appreciated. And Tundra Keeper, greatly appreciated. Char Games YT, thank you very, very much. And Carolinum, <laughs> sounds like Carolinium, which is actually an element on the periodic table. It's an artificial element. I mean, artificial in that it has to be made in, in a fission pile, but it can be done. It, it doesn't matter. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> And Sammy, greatly appreciated. Gordon Ramsey, thumbs up and thank you. Taylor Williams, greatly appreciated. Lil Glock, greatly appreciated. Emerald, thumbs up and thank you. Blaine Reinhardt, greatly appreciated. Momoka B, thank you very, very much. And Lovecraftian, I like the name. Craven Blood, thank you very, very much. And Coco's 89891, thumbs up and thank you. Matthew Flat, greatly appreciated. And Mika Mach 5, good to see you in the comments. And Grim R34 PER5555, thumbs up and thank you. X Twisties, greatly appreciated. Barrel Dolph Lerner, thumbs up and thank you. And last but not least, Donut Sticks 22, heck of a name. Thank you very, very much. Greatly appreciated. This stayed to get me out of this head into the real world, dealing with actual people. Thank you very, very much. I'm going to go through and read the comments. Afterward, I didn't read them now. I'm going to thumbs up each one I read, answer as many as I can. Greatly appreciated, each and every one of you. You see, now it's at 18 minutes and 40 seconds, and I have no idea what to do. Should I continue talking and stretch this out to 20 minutes, or should I just say, well, shucks, I blew that one and let it go? I will say this, though. If you could check out my game channel, I have a game channel. I should have the link right up here. If you hit that little bar thing, not bar, a little button thing or whatever it is. I don't even know. YouTube probably has changed it by this time, but there should be an indicator up there, links to my game channel. It's not monetized. But if we could get it monetized, it'd be awesome. I'm trying not to become homeless, and any amount of money I can get helps. So thumbs up on that. Again, don't feel obligated. I don't feel entitled. I'll continue making videos even if it doesn't get monetized, but it would be cool. So thank you very, very much. I have an Amazon wish list if you want to support me in any fashion without actually sending me money. It's got everything from cat food to hamster food to all sorts of stuff. So if you could check that out, it'd be awesome. Again, don't feel obligated. 
Well, now look at that. So I'm going to hopefully have a reaction video, hopefully a game video, hopefully a game video for my game channel. God, I want to live stream again. I'm so sorry I keep falling asleep. But you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And then, my friend, it's an awesome thing.